Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, wherever you are joining us from. I want to say good evening to you. A friend of mine told me a personal story. Her parents had four beautiful and lovely girls. But the father was not satisfied with the children because all of them are girls. So he said that he wanted a male child, a boy child, because he wanted somebody, someone that would continue with the lineage of the family. So he was not satisfied with all these beautiful children. So this man eventually ran away with another woman. And for several years, for close to 25 years, they never heard anything of this man. Unfortunately, the woman was left with these girls to take care of them all alone by herself. It was not an easy journey for them, like she told me. Also, <laughs> the journey was very, very rough. But the woman decided that she would do everything possible to make sure that she gave these children, these girls, quality education. And she started that journey. My friend said, her mother had to take up several jobs in order to take care of them. She was a teacher as well as a tailor. And also she got herself involved in some petty, petty businesses in order to make ends meet for our girls and to make life better for our girls. My friend also told me that time, there, are, there were times they needed to hug in order for them to eat as well as to do several things that were necessary. And later, these children, these girls, they entered the university. All of them, they went to federal universities. And when they graduated, according to her story, two of her sisters got scholarships to study abroad. And when this, when after they finished from their, they finished their education, they started working. Two of them became engineers. One is a renowned lawyer. In fact, my friend is a lawyer and she's doing very well in a chosen field. One became a medical doctor. She's now based abroad. All of them are doing very well, very well. Good afternoon. My name is Temitokwe Abiodun Balogun. Today, I want to welcome you to this program. We are will be looking at the girl child as a blessing to humanity. I want all the girls, all the ladies, all the women that are listening to me, wherever you are, I want you to give yourself a hug. I want you to do that, to show that as a girl, you love yourself. As a woman, you love yourself. As a lady, you love yourself. And thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I want us to know 
that for several years, I mean globally, the girl child has faced some severe challenges. That has been from time immemorial and Nigeria is never an exception. This is because Nigeria is a society that is deeply rooted in patriarchy where we believe that the male child is superior to the other gender because there are some perspectives, there are some cultural values that are deeply rooted in our culture that has given us that mentality that the, the male child is superior to, all other, to the female gender. So that has been in place over the years. And that has also engendered the roles that we give to the male, male children as well as the female children. So over the years, it has impeded the development and the growth of the girl child. So this perspective, this cultural perspective has really created a very huge gap between the male child, the boy child, and the girl child. In fact, it has also created an environment where right from birth, the female child, the girl child knows that there is a kind of disparity. There is a kind of, there is a huge gap between the girl child and the boy child. This starts when a child is giving birth to. When a child is giving birth to, in the African setting, there is this common utterance. Is he a, a boy or a girl? And when the reply is, she's a girl, you see people saying, oh, she's a girl. So it will come with a tone of disappointment because culturally, we've been made to believe that as a girl child, you are, you, you are, your role in destiny is limited, is limited. And also, with these perspectives, with this cultural background, and the perspectives that are, you know, that had been there from time immemorial, African parents will now begin to work in that perspectives. And that is the reason why you see some of them, they will refuse to educate the girl child. I remember that my mother told me a story. She said that the parents preferred, in fact, the parents sent the male children to school while neglecting the female children. But she wanted to be educated. And at the end of the day, she, by her, by, by her own efforts, she was able to get a uh, uh, desire. So with this perspective, you see that many African parents began to educate the male children at the expense of the, of the female children. They, leave, they will leave the children, the girl child, the female children to waste away in the farm, they leave them to waste away in the farm. They leave them to take away to take care of the of the other siblings, especially boys. And at the end of the day, they are married off as early as possible. And while in their marriage, their major preoccupation is is to procreate, is to care for their husbands care for their children, take care of the homes, take care of the in-laws, take care of everybody around them. So you can see that these girls that will later grow up as women, 
are disempowered. They are discriminated against and they are exposed to poverty at an early, at an early age. So in essence, these girls are economically disadvantaged and with the future holding nothing for them. And it is important for us to know that a girl child is very important. As we hold the boy child to be important, also the girl child is very, very important. In fact, if not more important. So there is the urgent need for us as parents to make sure that we empower the girl child, whether they are biological children or they are adopted. Any girl child around us, we must make sure that whatever we can do to empower them, we start doing that. Also, if we want to build an equitable society, a society where all genders have their equal rights, equal place, we must treat children equally. Both the boy and the girl child are very important in the family. They're also very important to the nation. In fact, it will shock you to know that there are things that are more to the advantages, to the advantages of the girl child than the boy child. By the way, if you look at the way they are wired, I mean, the girl child is wired. She has the capacity to multitask. The girl child is usually very strong and you will see her having the ability to handle stress more than the boy child. In fact, if as a parent, you give the boy child and the girl child, you leave them in the kitchen, you will discover that while the girl child is just working and she's also happy doing, the, doing those chores, the boy child will, will look for several reasons why he must not do all of those chores unless the parents take their stand. So also when you look at the girl child, you see that most girls, most women, they have the ability to take care of the family, take care of their in-laws, take care of aged parents, more than, the, more than the boys. In fact, when you look at it critically, at least we've seen several people say that, that even in old age, that most of in, amongst their children, it is the girls that will usually want to come home, usually want to call, usually want to see the parents and spend time with them. But because we have trained the boy child to believe that what he has to do as a family man is for him to just, to just provide for the family. So what some of them do will be to just send money, send money to their hijab parents, uh, maybe once in a very blue moon, to, to, to give a call. But that is unlike the girl child because they have the ability, they, it is in it, they have this ability to take care of people around them, parents, family members, inclusive. According to CESA 2019, she said that females use their five senses much better and females are able to remember sensory information very easily. And they also have better hearing ranges than males. That's a study that was carried out by this woman. And there are several examples of Nigerian female, uh, Nigerian females who are given equal opportunities like their male counterparts and they did extraordinarily well. There are several examples, several examples of them. We have people like Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, the first female student in our school, Abekuta Grammar School in 1914. She was an advocate of female rights 
and she led this course with some women in the first half of the 20th century. What about Margaret Echo? She's also another wonderful and influential woman. During her days, she was a, she was a human rights activist. She was a feminist and she was a political juggernaut. She used all her energies to fight for women's rights. In fact, there was a time she needed to mobilize women to fight against injustice of her time, to fight against inequality of her time, and their voices were heard. Okay, we can say these are examples of women that are no longer living, but we have several examples of living legends. What about Okonjo Ngozi Wela, who despite her age, is still making waves in the global community? This woman, she's the first African to assume the position of Director General of the World Trade Organization. In Nigeria alone, she has used her uh, expertise to serve various governments and various presidents. In essence, my point is, the girl child must have a right to quality education. She must not be denied of healthcare system. She must not be discriminated against. She must be given equal opportunity as a boy and child, as mothers and as parents. It must start from us. Enough of tagging some roles as meant for the girl, for the girl child. Why some are meant for the boy child? We must train them equally. A boy child must be trained to make a home, like the girl child. A boy child must be schooled in the heart of cooking, like the girl child. A girl child must learn how to fix tires of the cars. She must learn how to drive, how to fix bulbs, like the, child, like the boy child counterparts. So in essence, we're saying we must never neglect our girls. We must see them as blessings, which they, they are to us. They are blessings to the society. They are blessings to the nation. So we must give them equal opportunity. Give them the, the opportunity to express their God-given ability. So when we do this, you will see how their God-given ability will be expressed. So they will be able to make their own choices in life. Mm -hmm. And through this, they can change the world. They can stand up for themselves. If all of us listening to me decide to take up this advocacy that the girl child is a blessing to humanity, I'm telling you, we are going to have a well-developed and balanced society where there will be increase in growth. And even our growth would be rapid because the educational rates we accommodate the, the educational system, we accommodate the girls, the women, and all of these have roles in nation building. So when we give them the opportunity, it's going to increase uh, the, the, the economy of the nation. It's going to reduce poverty. The poverty rate will be reduced because the girl child will have been empowered and she can, because of this, because of this empowerment, she can contribute meaningfully to the national economy. And when the girl child is empowered, inequality will be reduced. It can even be totally removed because we are going to have a society where the female voices will count and where females can represent the agenda and as well as the society as large. We have to think about it. Sometimes you see that in many parastatus, in many of governments, in many of our government agencies, you don't have women, you don't have 
women being represented. And in government, things that are discussed, we have to do with the citizens. And citizens comprise of both male and female. So where we have only the men making decisions for things that concern the women, things that concern the children, where many of them don't even know, many of them, not all of them, many of them don't even know how to take care of the children except to give money. And you are now excluding the people that have relational experience, the people that have that, that know how to do this, that have been doing it. You know, it is, abnorm it is abnormal. So when we empower the girl child, inequality will be removed, will be reduced, because women will have to participate in decision-making at all levels. Definitely. This is going to lead to the Nigeria of our dreams. So it is a time for us to expose the girl child to quality education at all levels. It is time for us to allow them access to good healthcare system. It is time for us to allow them to have personal identity to have personal identity. It is time for us to allow them to have a voice. And I'm telling you, it begins with you. It begins with you. You can start wherever you are, in your family, in your organization, in your environment. Make sure that the female voices around you are heard, not only seen. Thank you for listening.